All right, everybody, welcome back to Marshall Remodel. This is the Mad County Build Series, and tonight we are going to do a walkthrough of the downstairs electrical. Pretty much all of it's done that we can do. Um, we got all the porch lights on, all the can lights in the house. It, I mean, it's looking pretty nice. Oh, I'm so excited. It's looking amazing. So we got all your requests on things you guys wanted to see, like three-way switches, um, outlets, all that kind of stuff, and I've decided I'm going to do a special video for that. So tonight we're just going to do a walkthrough of the house. So let's go. All right. All right, guys, we will just start right here. And we got our dust to dawn lights on our garage, which are looking pretty sweet. Got them between each garage door and then one by the walk door. And then if you can look past the storage that uh, is on the porch, it's going to be pretty sweet. Yes. It desperately so. needs some staging, though. We got all our can lights going. We're just uh, holding off on this cedar ceiling for a while. What would have cost us like 1200 bucks is now like 3000 So we're going to hold off and see what happens to lumber prices. Um, but we got all the lights in. Got our main entrance light. And then the cans go all the way around. And one thing that we wanted, we this porch is gonna be a place that we hang out a lot. So yeah. what all we got? We got wired, we're wired for ceiling fans out here. We're wired for speakers. Um, I even ran a Cat 6 wire out here. I'm trying to think if that's it. Yeah, I mean, you put in... I put in, um, I put, also put in switch to outlets for Christmas lights. Yeah. I think we're set up pretty good on the porch, and yeah, we're going to be using this space a lot. So hopefully we can get uh, all of this stuff off the porch once we get moved in the house, and we can put this stuff in the garage. Yes. That'd be super special. That is the game plan, and that's what is going so, to happen. That but sometimes... be a place to hang out. Yeah, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know? So right inside the door, we got the stairs that go up. The future slide. We'll do a walkthrough over here, but that'll be the kitchen. Dining room over there. That'll be... Our wood stove will be going right there. Versetta stone all the way up. And then what are you going to have out here, Em? We're going to do a seating area here, maybe either two couches or just one really large couch that kind of loops around and a table so that we can hang out, enjoy the fire. Um, we've got it wired to put a TV up there if we want to so that we could watch TV in this room eventually. Yeah, so when you come in, I got I have switches, and again, we used all these Lutron LED switches. So we can control porch lights, and then three different sets of lights in here, and then we have three ways for those over there by the sliding glass door. Uh, to control our ceiling fans and switched outlets outside, I kind of broke them up into groups. So this top one is the ceiling fan control and the switch for kind of the north side of the porch. And then this will be for, I guess you'd call it the west side of the porch. So I got those broke up into groups. And then right here, this will be the future control sound, um, master sound control for the porch speakers. We'll also be able to control those through Wi-Fi, but I wanted a manual one as well, so. Right here we got, we're building a hearth. Uh, we just wanted to kind of define this space. We're gonna set the wood stove on that in we have found that ha even though we have concrete and we'd be fine, we have found that having it like this, it's easier to tell the kids and give them kind of a boundary 
obviously because wood stoves get super hot that they just don't go on the hearth and they did real they were a lot younger at our last house where they had uh, we had a wood stove and they did pretty good with it so plus i think it's a nice way to just add a little bit of design since the concrete yeah. can maybe feel a little bit colder in a space like this sure yeah, so none of them ever touched it. The only thing they did is uh, Remington decided he thought it'd be fun to melt a glue stick on uh, the window. <laughs> but hey, you at least it. he didn't touch it, I guess. All the can lights up here, which I showed you, but they are on. Can you hit the fireplace ones? Okay. We've got the two here on the fireplace wired separately. Kind of highlight that. Then we got the dining room. We will have a light up here, which is that guy right there. But why don't you talk about this space here? Why these outlets are so high? Kind of what the future plan sure. is for that. So the eventual plan in like a phase, you might call it phase two of this build, is that we want to put a serving area on, all along this wall. So we're going to do cabinets with a countertop and then upper glass cabinet. And uh, that's just going to really add a lot to this space to make it even more fun when we want to entertain. We got a couple questions on the color of the lights and uh, the can lights that we're using have five different settings from I think it's 2700 to I think 5000 and these are set at 3500 which it's it's the middle of the road it's just below bright white so we will get a ladder and we will show you the different color temperatures that you can choose with these lights. These are a real reasonably priced uh, can light that you can buy. All right, so the first setting we'll do here. So this is warm light. This is 2700K and that's the lowest setting. And then you have soft white, which is 3000. That's soft white. And then you have neutral white, which is 3,500K, which is what we have everything set at. It just seems to uh, be kind of what we like. And then you have bright white, which almost starts to turn a little bit blue. Again, yeah, that's bright white. And then the last one is daylight, which is 5,000 K. Um, this, this closet is going to be great storage. We aren't entirely sure what we're going to use it for, but it's between the kitchen and the dining room and master. So it's going to be a really easy spot to keep a lot of different things. Yeah, one thing we do not lack is storage. It's kind of something we're always intentional about. Then we have, these are gonna be two separate thermostats. This is the radiant heat thermostat, which is for this zone out here. And then this will be for the HVAC system right here. So, and then right here, we have the kitchen area. We have the big, um, island right here. Layout for the kitchen is this wall. We'll have our coffee bar, our refrigerator, and just some um, counter space. This wall is going to have our range with a hood, and then the island will, will sit here with our sink, dishwasher on either side, and then seating for our whole family behind there. We'll check out the pantry. All right. We haven't officially designed the pantry yet, but the um, general plan for this is to take count, take uh, cabinets in here on these three walls and do upper cabinets up here, open shelving across the middle, and then more um, cabinetry up here. So we're going to have like a baking station um, in this area, 
We have a juicer that we like using that will be here because we're going to add a sink. And then over here, we're going to keep our microwave. And we have pendant. Some of the things we haven't wired yet is all of the 20 amp kitchen outlets. And that's because we're going to do a backsplash. We're going to do it right away. So I didn't want to wire up all these outlets just to have to turn the circuit off pull them out, put the backsplash up, and then reinstall them. So all the dedicated 20 amp kitchen circuits are not hooked up, and we're not gonna do that until we get those installed. And then we have three pendant lights right here that we don't have yet that will hang over the island. All of our, everywhere we have upper cabinets, we're gonna have under cabinet lighting. So we'll have a um, high voltage to low voltage uh, switch, dimmable switch, and that goes up to um, where the Romex switches over to low voltage. And that will, this box here will be accessible inside the cabinet. And then this pops out through the bottom rung of the cabinets. And then that's how I run my LED lights. But I'll show you all that when we get to that. We don't have those switches either. They're super expensive, but I like them because I think it's all just in that switch, um, but they are extremely pricey. So I have one of those here that'll control all the under cabinet lights in the kitchen. And then in the pantry, there will be one right here, which will control all the under cabinet lighting in here. All right, bringing you over to the stairs where we have more storage. Uh, this, now if the closets under the stairs seem big, it's because they are. <laughs> There's the, sta the normal staircase and then the slide will go next to it. So that makes this closet really deep and actually very useful. Uh, we have a lot of ideas for this spot. It will probably be somewhat of a guest coat closet. It will uh, store our vacuums that need to be powered up. Um, and then I think, Paul, you had a couple ideas of what you wanted in there too. Yeah, we'll see. It's a, it's a work in progress, but. And then this is gonna be just for the kids. We're gonna create a little space for them to just hang out. Um, they can, you know, have their tablet time, have their reading time, all that kind of stuff. So the kids are thrilled about it. They practice all going in there and seeing how they're all gonna sit. It's really quite cute. Seen this, this is the mud room, which is right off the garage right here. So we're gonna have cabinets built in along this side and this side. And then we have a bathroom in here, which that is a temporary vanity. Um, the master suite, it consists of our office, our bedroom, our bathroom, and our closet. And so I'll just kind of take you through and show you what we're doing in those spaces. The office, we have can lights above where each of us will have a desk in here. Uh, we're also gonna add a ceiling light at some point. We can control each control our lights separately. So these two are on a switch and then these two are on a switch. And then we also have um, cat six ran to both sides of the office to hardwire computers, um, plenty of outlets. I know somebody was asking about cat six. We have cat six run to every single room. Mm -hmm. Access points wired where we can put um, put those up too. So I think our Wi-Fi is going to be pretty good. And these outlets are something unique in our office and also on either side of our bed with the USB ports built into them. So a few houses ago, Paul decided to start using these four inch can lights above our bed to use as reading lights so that we wouldn't have to have any lamps or sconces. And that's worked out really well for us in the past because um, the nice part about it is that the light is actually above you while you're trying to read. So, um, you know, you actually get to see what you're doing. So that we have a switch for both of them there. Emily, so Emily can turn hers on when she comes in and off in bed. And then this one on this side, you can turn, it's on a three-way switch there and there. 
So it's the American way. You don't even have to get up out of bed to turn your light off. And then we added USB outlets to both sides to charge those smartphones. Yeah, we still need to select wall sconces. We have a ceiling fan we still need to install. So there's a lot of uh, decorative fixtures that we need to um, put up. The wall sconce there and there. See right. Fan. So we are going on like nine months of sharing that one bathroom in there. And so we are really pumped to all have our own space and our own bathroom. So for lighting, we did can lights so that you can for sure see in addition to having a light above each vanity. We have a motion sensor light for the main can light, so they'll automatically turn on and off. Explain this here, your cabinet sure. there. So on this side of my vanity, it's going to be a cabinet that runs all the way down to the countertop and there's a door here and on the shelf is where I'll keep anything uh, electronic like the toothbrush i have some you know fake skincare tools that need power so that's where all of that can get stored it's really nice because it's really out of the way and doesn't take up counter space over here and then this will be a tile walk-in shower so we gotta we gotta do a lot of work in there and then we have a special hot box room Called a toilet closet. Toilet closet. I guess that's what the normal people call it. I call it a hot box room. And then here's our closet laundry room area. Okay, so on this side we'll have a washer and dryer for the main level. Some more can lights up here so you can see what, what you're doing anytime, day or night. And for over here, this is going to end up having shelving all the way up and um, right here is going to be access so that we can light the shelves if we would like to, which I think is going to be pretty fun. And you guys probably remember a little while ago we talked about this, this part used to be just open to the rest of the closet but Paul framed up this wall so that he could turn this space into its own special room. For my screwdrivers and hammers and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but the rest of this area, we still have a light to put up there, which we do not um, have everything to do that. And then I think Emily would like an island out here eventually to fold clothes. And then, you know, we'll do built-ins, I think, right? Yes, we, we have some ideas for designing the closet in here, but we aren't 100% sure how we want to do that. Probably a combination of hanging space and drawer space so that we don't have to have dressers or anything like that. The lights make all the difference in the world. It's nice to be able to come in here and see one last thing to talk about is all of these headers you see right here. I don't know if any of you guys have been paying attention to the sawmill, chainsaw mill that I'm building, but one of the things I'm gonna use that for is to cut um, some slabs of timber off of our own property and cover these uh, beams with. So that's gonna be pretty sweet, at least I think it is to cover those with wood from our own property. So that's gonna be the goal with that chainsaw mill. And I'm also gonna build a dining room table that will basically run the, the majority of the length of this space right here. So just with those two projects, uh, I think I'm gonna be able to make my money back for what I have into that. And that's basically the price of the saw, so. That's a wrap for the downstairs lighting. Um, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Uh, click the bell for notifications so you won't miss any of the videos we have coming up because there is a lot that we are doing right now.
Yes, and for those of you who left questions on how to wire up an outlet, how to wire up three-way switch, I'm gonna do a special video for that, like I said, and I will bring that out um, in the next week. So again, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next video.